This is Professor Darif Seitz. This Java tutorial demonstrates some of the string class functions that are commonly used for processing strings. Listed here in comments are the functions that will be demonstrated in this example. Note that strings in Java are constant. Once you assign them a value, that value cannot be changed. You can get copies of the string, get parts of the string, and, and do the processing uh, as you need to do, but it's important to remember that they are immutable. Here's our main method, and first we declare our strings that we're going to be using in this example and initialize them. And strings are text. So even if there's a number here, notice that it's in double quotes. Those are the delimiters for a string constant. And it's still text as a string. The names that we give them are representative of their value. Little a is little a. Capital A is capital A. ABC is ABC. The ints and the doubles, there's no... Uh, allow for a decimal point in a name, so we did an underscore there, but its value is 7.7 .7 for that double. We use two of the actual string constructors, uh, the default constructor here to get an empty string, and then the constructor that takes a string parameter to initialize a string. Strings also allow straight initialization uh, syntax with a string literal on the right and in the assignment operator on the left, as we've shown here. Our two longer strings, string 1 and string 2, say on the left side of the dusty road, a field of tall sunflowers stood at attention. And the second one, the sea billowed mightily as the sailboat surged through the straits of Cape Horn. Note we also have a string called extra spaces that has four spaces on the left and on the right side of it. First our program displays the, the names of our strings and their values. This program is self-annotating in the output. It shows the code and the result. The first group of statements looks at char at. We use indexes to find what character is at a certain position in the string. Indexes in strings are zero relative. The first character is zero, and the last character in the string is one less than the length of the string, where the length is the number of characters in the string. So if we look at the char at zero, that would be the first character. Char at one would be the second, etc. Here, string length, the string, so length minus 1 will be the last character. We'll look at this output when we run the program in detail. Compare to allows a string to compare to another string, and we're talking about alphabetical comparison, which is called lexical comparison. Strings are stored using Unicode, and the values that will be returned here will either be a less than 0, for something being alphabetically less than something else, equal to zero for equality, and greater than zero for greater than. We can also compare to ignoring the case, because upper and lower case letters are not in the same position in the alphabet, and they do have a lexical order. Actually, the uppercase letters precede the lowercase letters. There's also the common equals function that's used for objects, and since string, strings are objects, that's commonly used to compare them. There's also an equals ignore case, treating them as they were the same case, ignoring differences of upper and lower case. Index of takes a character as one of its uh, signatures, and this will look through the string for that particular character, and if it finds it, will return the index, the zero relative index. Otherwise, it will return negative one if it can't find it. There's also another version of it that you can look for an actual string. You can think of this as a substring that you're looking for in the string, 
and again it returns the index or negative 1 if it can't find it. There's last index versions of those two functions as well. The difference is the last index versions start at the end of the string working backwards trying to find the last occurrence of a particular character or string. The length of the string uh, is the number of characters in the string. Substring, you can give a beginning index and look through the string for a particular um, not actually look through the string, you're going to get a string this way, it's not looking. So substring, if you give it a beginning index, you will get a substring and that substring will start at that index and it will go all the way to the end of the string including the last character of the string. So it's a way to get the tail end of a string starting at a certain spot, a certain position. There's another version of it that you tell it where to start but you don't go all the way to the end of the string, you give it an ending index. And it's a little bit tricky because it does not include the character at the ending index. It'll start at the beginning character, including it, and it'll take a substring up to, but just before the ending index, the character immediately before it. You have to be careful with that one. To uppercase will return a string that's the all uppercase version of the string that you uh, are calling it from. Trim will remove any leading or trailing white space on the string. We're going to call that by taking our string A, concatenate it with the string concatenation operator with extra spaces and then B on the right and then we'll try to, that again with the trim function on extra spaces and we'll see the difference. There are two value of static methods, static functions, that you must use the string class name. You can take an int and get it as a string. So we take various ints here, or a double and get a string version of them. Now we're going to run this program and look at how these functions behave. Here we see the output. Our strings are shown. The long ones wrap in the console window. First, charat, charat, the character at position 0 of string 1 is the capital O, position 1 is the N, position 2 is the space, and string 1 length minus 1 is the last character, which is a period. And we print out those results. Compared to A, compared to ABC, a is less than, so you get a negative. A compared to A is equal, you get a zero. B compared to A is greater, so you get a one. Little a compared to big A, the little a is greater than the capital A, so you get a positive number. You can't rely on the values of the numbers, just less than zero, zero you can, or greater than zero. Comparing to ignoring case, A compared to capital A now is equal because we ignore the capitalization and capital A compared to little b uh, now ignoring case comes back as less than because A would come before B if you just ignore their case. The equals function A and ABC are not equal, A and A are equal, A and capital A are not equal. When you ignore case a and capital A now are equal, and the other ones are the, the similar result. Index of a character, if we look at the index of a comma in string 1, it's at 34. If we look for a Z, there is no Z, you get a negative 1. Look for a little a, index 6. Index of strings, index of left side in string 1 is 7. Index of right doesn't exist, it's negative 1. Index of low, uh, low was part of the word, uh, part of a word. It wasn't a word by itself, but it still finds it in the string at position 11 in string 2. So if we go up there to string 2, we have billowed, so there's a low and billowed there. Last index of works from the back of the string. The last index of 
a little t, the 77 in string 1. The period is the last character of the string in string 1. It's at 81. And notice when we look at the length of the string, it's 82 down here. So it's 1 before the length. Last index of E. There's no Z. You get a negative 1. You can look for last index of strings as well. Looking for 10, which is part of a word. It's at 74. There's no zebra. You get a negative 1. The period treated as a string is at 83. That's one less than the length of the string at 84. Substrings starting at positions. <coughs> ABC substring at 1. Remember it's 0, 1. So it's, it starts at the B and goes all the way to the end of the string. BC. Substrings starting at 52 of string 1. Sunflower stood at attention. And that goes all the way to the end of the string because it just has the beginning index. Notice the period there included. Here we have substring string 2's length minus 10, so we can back up and take the tail end of the string there. It's Cape Horn. This substring uses a begin index and an end in index, but you have to be careful. So substrings here, we pull out Dusty Road and Billowed. Two uppercase uh, converts to all uppercase. Trim, we put a and extra space and B together, and we see the spaces there, but when we trim extra space and put them together, those spaces are gone. Finally, we take value of some ints, 1, 2, 3, 4 becomes that, 0, the negative, and some doubles. So that's good to be able to use that to convert from certain um, intrinsic types to a, a string. Let's go back to the code now. In this tutorial, we've reviewed some of the string functions that are commonly used here. String, constructors, character at, compare to's, some equals, index of's, last index of's, length, substrings, two upper and trim, and value of's. And we're going to again go to the output now. Here we see the first part of the output all the way down through the equals ignore case. Then we'll scroll down, looking down to all the way down to the two uppercase, and then finally the rest of the output is shown.